we thank the lord for his precious word he is ministering to us week after week sayol sayol ki ekoi da isor na thogol to biri bowa hi mamalu ro bowa hi singa sigi da mo isor bu thagat jeri the lord has been very very gracious and merciful towards god's people isor di ma ki mi sing da ya amna thaujal hai na before i turn to god's word and we continue with our meditation ai koi na ai koi ki meditation se makha sa thadring ai mamang da kari gumba khara ina i am reminded of something which i would like to share with us ai ngon da ning singhan bi ba kari gumba khara lai this time of pandemic or this pandemic time when we have so many restrictions ai koi da thing we am na lai ba lai chat ki asi gumba matam asi when we are not able to gather together physically In this country, in this land, and we are limited by this virtual gathering. This could be a time of trial and testing for us. It may be a time to test us as to how. faithful and honest we are with god ai koi kaya muk isor da pukchen ting ba amadi thaja ba ya ba oi ba ge ha ba ge god may test as to where our hearts are ai koi gi thamoi ase karai da leke ha ba na isor na kar kari da thami ba ge ha where our priorities are ai koi gi maru oi ba se kari da piri ba ge ha ba se isor na changing to ba matam ma oi ba ya ba ni we heard from the book of isaiah isaiah gi lyric ta gi koi na ta khra ba ni And chapter fifty-two, Panduk, yang kini tuhigi. We have been meditating on that, wherein it says, "Awake, awake!" Ay koy na masida wakal tau dunal lakli. God's glorious, hauro hauro, purpose of restoring Zion unto all that God has. purposed for zion we heard over many many months ai koi na tha kaya chup na tara khara bani the ascendancy of zion zion gi wangkha to her glorious heights would need faith ma ki matik mangal gi mawang adu ta kakha lord says awake aja bani darkar ho rakli bese ishor na i'm not getting back into those thoughts again today but This is something the Lord reminded me this morning as I was waiting on God. As some of God's people, right in the midst of us, are in deep sleep. While the wake-up call of God is going on. उसरी ईश्वर की मीओ सिंह दिल्ली न्यू दिल्ली इसी तरह लेरी बनी है। लेस दिस मैसेज इज़ रीचिंग मेनी अदर पीपल। वेल आई डू नॉट नो बट दिस द बर्डन द लॉर्ड हैज़ लेड अपॉन माय हार्ट। मैसेज की मैसेज से यो रगल लेरी बन मफ़म कुदिंग मक सिंह की मितारी बनी सिंह ना खंग दबाई आई अदु मैसेज। When God's word came to them, it's like an alarm that has been ringing, and there was a response to that alarm and that wake-up call. But the sad thing is that some of them have gone to sleep again. This is what God has laid upon my heart to share. You did wake up to that trumpet call of God. But unfortunately, it's like the man who kept the alarm and it rang. He woke up and then slumbered back again. I want to be 
true to God as God has laid this upon my heart. There are attitudes and mentalities that can be in us. When we are coming into a physical gathering, we know. But when you are into a, a virtual gathering, your attitudes, mentalities, your posture, your reverence to God matters, dear brother and sister. Honor thy God. That's the first commandment. Honor your God. Honor your God. God has laid this upon my heart to share with God's people. And therefore this time of virtual gatherings could be a time to know whether you and I, whether we honor God. Virtual gathering as it is the attitude that prevailed in the days of Malachi wherein they said anything is acceptable to God that attitude can only bring us to a, a place where you will find a closed door as the Lord said will anyone rise up and close that door for me may God help us brethren I just want to read a few scriptures. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Arise, awake. If you are slumbered back to sleep again, this is what the Lord would like to say to you. Awake, awake that thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. I shall give thee light. Remember saints of God. The house of God is not a place of entertainment. The house of God is not a place where we can satisfy the soul of man and its ways. House of God is where we meet with God. Meet with His holiness. Meet with His righteousness. Meet with His demands. He's not an unrighteous one. He's not an unloving one. May God help us. I would like to turn again to the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15. And verse 34. Away to righteousness. And sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Paul did not write these words to the heathen. Paul did not write this to the ones who were walking in the streets of Corinth, the metropolis. But Paul wrote these words to born again baptized spirit filled believers in the Corinthian church away to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of God all the born again all the baptized all the filled in the Holy Spirit all the coming together as the church of Jesus Christ he says some do not have the knowledge of God to keep away from sin and live in the righteousness of God if you have slipped back again to that sleep mode, the Lord is saying to awake. And the Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit says, the, the believers in the Corinthian church, I speak this to your shame. 
It's a word from a loving father to the spiritual children. And may God help us to take this word in humility into our hearts. Like to read again to Romans chapter 13. These are words the Lord laid upon my heart as I was almost winding up my time with the Lord this morning. Verse, again verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than we believed. Nearer than we believed. I'm not getting into the translations for want of time because I need to move on into the things that God has for us. With these words, you can read these verses, especially this verse in J.B. Phillips and, and Amplified New Testament. It will be very precious for us. But let me just read this in the, from the King James. James Version, and knowing the time, and now it is high time to awake out of sleep. And I want to say this, as the Lord has laid on my heart, very specifically, some of us are in deep spiritual slumber. Some did wake up, but gone back into sleep again. And the Lord is saying, Awake out of your sleep. But now is your salvation. Nearer. Your salvation is knocking at the door. The Lord said to the church in Laodicea. Open. Your salvation is nearer. Than when we believed. So may God really help us. Is my prayer. My request to all of us. Let's not take things for granted. As we heard in the previous weeks, we shall not get through to the end of God's purpose and see the fulfillment of God's purpose in no other way than the way of faith. Ascendancy demands faith to ascend from every earthliness to ascend from everything that is of the soul to ascend from everything that is of the world, we need faith. And we thank God for all that God has been speaking to us in the last couple of weeks. God has been faithful. God's God has been speaking to us very specifically the need of faith in our hearts in these days is the substance. As we saw from the book of Hebrews chapter 11 let me read that again now faith is the substance of things hoped for evidence of things not seen we heard that we need to have faith Faith brings us into oneness with God's purpose. Faith brings us into oneness with God's method, which is separation by the cross. God, uh, faith brings us into oneness with God's means, which is the Holy Spirit. God, you know, the faith brings us into oneness with God's method. Now, 
God brings us into oneness with God's time. The spirit of sonship is God's method. And we heard, faith brings us into oneness with God's time. Oh, there are wonderful and precious things you know, the God opened our eyes to see and behold. It was revealed by the Holy Spirit. We read about Simeon. The Holy Spirit revealed unto him. And it brought that faith in him to wait for God's time. We saw all that very clearly ministered to us step by step. And we heard last week very clearly that faith is so important in our lives. In these perilous times in which we are living, as the Apostle Paul says, while many would come into shipwreck in their lives, there are those who will move on and would say, I have kept the faith. And those who would like to keep the faith will have to fight a good fight of faith. Don't you know. So we need to have faith to fight a good fight of faith. And I kept the faith. So brethren, I would like to say that these are not mere statements in the scripture, but it's a testimony of a man of God. Amen? It's a testimony of a man of God. It's not the preaching of a man of God, but it was a testimony of a man who kept the faith. And therefore he says, I fought a good fight of faith. So I would encourage all of us, the more spiritual we want to be, the more the battles are. We see a lot of things last week. And I would not want to go into all that that we heard. But we heard one thing very clearly that we have a heavenly high priest. Hallelujah. We have an anchor. We have a heavenly high priest. We have an anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast and entering into that which is within the veil. And we thank God while many would make shipwreck in these end times, which is a great possibility as we heard, we need to know the truth and hold on to that in faith. We heard towards the end how the church will reach the end goal and purpose, even that fullness in Christ, only by traveling the pathway of faith. Moving from pressure to enlargement, from poverty to enrichment. And we saw the example of the three Hebrew children. And as we heard towards the end, well, we will put our anchor and counter the drive, the drive of the forces of darkness. By the work and the living person and the glorious heavenly intercession of our heavenly high priest. And that's how we are going to Move on to the end. And this morning I want to move further on. 
So uh, I just mentioned this one thing to us. There are great possibilities of this terrible shipwreck of faith despite the provisions God has for his people. So we need to know the truth and hold on to it in faith. That is how the church of Jesus Christ will move on in these end times. So I'd like to bring something about the truth and then move on to faith again. So we need to hold on to this truth in faith, when we turn to the book of uh, Proverbs and chapter 9, the Lord led me to these scriptures, therefore, you know, chapter 9 of Proverbs and verse 1, Wisdom had built her house, she had hewn out seven, her seven pillars. And of course, as we read that chapter, we are not able to see, we don't see the Nine pillars, one by one mentioned there. For that you need to glean through the scriptures. But the truth is, wisdom had built her house. She had hewn out seven pillars. This divine house, Concerning which the Apostle Paul says, as we read in the book of uh, Timothy, Paul says about this house, in chapter 3 and verse 15, First Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and the ground of the truth. Wisdom hath built her house with and hewn them out uh, hewn out her seven pillars. Uh, so this divine house, as Paul says, the church of God is the pillar and ground of the truth. The house of God which is the church of the living God. The house of God which is the church of the living God it's precious to see the pillar and the ground of the truth. Which is the pillar and the crown of truth, of the truth. And I want to say here, take away these pillars. What happens to that building? The house of God, the church of the living God, which is the pillar and ground of the truth. These seven pillars, they support the house of God, the church of the living God. Now, I'm not going into a study of the seven pillars, of course. But I'm just mentioning this. Which is the pillar and ground of the truth. This marvelous house of God, which is the church of the living God, 
Rest upon seven pillars. And what I'm trying to convey to us is take these pillars away and the house collapses. And Take away the pillars and the house collapses. It's no more there. It's finished. And let me say again, therefore, the creation was built upon these pillars. And when these pillars were interfered, the creation collapsed. And the creation began to disintegrate. And as the scripture says in Romans chapter 8, the whole creation is now groaning. Amen. That disintegrator created Creation is now groaning for a restoration. And God will do that. The earnest expectation of the whole creation is waiting for that day when there shall be a restoration of man himself. Hallelujah. Seven, of course, in the Bible numerology is symbolic of fullness. Or it speaks about spiritual completeness I'm not going to have a study we'll just leave all the details there but what I would like to bring to our attention today morning is undoubtedly the first of these pillars is the pillar of the truth as I shared uh, a while back, the Church of Jesus Christ has, will have to hold on to the truth in faith. Hallelujah. The Church of Jesus Christ will have to hold on to the faith, to the truth by faith. And that's why I want to share a little bit about truth today. And then move on to faith. Hold on to the truth in faith. The first of these pillars, of the seven pillars is the pillar of truth. I'd like to read a couple of verses. The book of John, John's Gospel, chapter 8. Gospel, John ki nipan nasi tayda. John's Gospel, chapter 8. Ki nipan. Hallelujah. Verse 44. Padana ni pumari. Ye are of your father, the devil, the lusts of your father, he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and father of it. Turn again to John chapter 1 John, sorry, 1 John, 
first zone B. Chapter two. Pandup Anigi. He that saith I know him Marida Aina verse four. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. That's a very strong word. He is writing to his little children and he says, He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Revelation chapter 21. And verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life, or that maketh a lie, will never be part of his new Jerusalem. Revelation 22 and verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So we see that the church of Jesus Christ is the ground and pillar of the truth. There is no place for anything that is a lie or that maketh a lie. No place. May God help us to understand that. So as I said right at the beginning, if you remove these pillars, the house collapses. And remember, the church of Jesus Christ stands on these seven pillars. And the first pillar to be the pillar of the truth. So we need to understand that sooner or later everything will stand or fall according to whether is resting upon the truth. And the storms came and the floods came and the house fell. For it was not founded on the pillars. So everything will stand or fall according to whether it rests upon the truth. It's a reality, brothers and sisters. Everything or anything that is false, everything that is not true, has its own doom within itself. Masada 
anything or everything that is false or untrue has its own doom within its own self. Within itself. Its fall is within itself. And God has very clearly given this in the word of God and shown to us in the word of God. So anything and everything that is false has its own doom within itself. We see that. God's word declares that very clearly. We see that all over. Truth Remember, the Lord himself is the truth. He himself is the God of truth. The word of God says in him is no lie. The word of God is a mighty revelation of the fact that God is intensely and fervently and burningly concerned about the truth. The psalmist says, Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. The Lord holds a lie as abomination in God's word. As we have seen in the book of Revelation, he consigns all liars to the lake of fire. He excludes them from his church, the bride, the new Jerusalem. Everyone who makes and loves a lie shall not be part, we read it. All liars will have their part in that great judgment of God. The Lord Jesus Christ called himself the truth. I am the truth. I am the truth. I am the truth. And we see in the book of Revelation, he is called the faithful and the true witness. The Lord Jesus said about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. When the spirit of truth is come, he said, and the church of Jesus Christ, which is the house of God, is the pillar and the ground of the truth. So I want to really emphasize this to us. We need to hold on to the truth in faith in these end times. The truth concerning the Lord, God's purpose, God's will, that is revealed and made known to his church. That's the pillar. One of the pillars, of course. And we need to hold on to 
the truth. As we saw from John chapter 8 verse 44, Satan is called the liar and the father of lies. There is no truth in him. As I said right at the beginning, the whole creation was built upon these pillars. But they were, when they were interfered with, the whole creation collapsed, disintegrated. This whole beautiful creation of God its whole structure collapsed when the lie of Satan ended in please understand this the whole creation beautiful creation of God the Lord said it's it's good it's good. It was to his satisfaction. It was to what he intended and desired in his heart. Amen. But that whole thing collapsed. When the lie ended in, the lie disintegrated everything. As we heard, the whole creation since then is groaning and I want to say one thing that lie runs through the constitution of this whole world today we can see that in the very makeup of this worldly order and I would like to pinpoint and say this. As men of God have seen this in their own lives. This lie is in man. Man is a lie. Why do I say that man is a lie? Because man is not what God meant him to be in the beginning. He is no more what God intended man to be. Therefore, man is a lie. Man is not what God had made him to be. I want to say, Man knows this quite well. That there is something not true with his very constitution. Every man knows that. There's something wrong with man himself. So, brothers and sisters, so here is the revealed truth. And that is God's building has pillars. And the very first pillar is the pillar of truth. Jesus Christ erected that pillar saying, I am the truth. Hallelujah. He erected that pillar for his own house and he said, I will build my church. He erected that pillar saying, I am the truth. And he began to build saying, I will build my church. And those things go together. The truth and the building. 
I will build my church. And so I just want to do emphasize this as the Lord laid upon my heart. As we shared, as we heard last week, how shall the church move on? We have to hold on to the truth. In faith. So the truth that God is revealing to us is not an option. It's the pillar. This truth, the truth that God is revealing will have to become pillars in our own lives. The Church of Jesus Christ, the house of God, is the pillar. And ground of the truth. Ground and the pillar of truth. So if truth is one pillar, the second pillar of the seven pillars, I believe, that God is building his house, is the pillar of faith. And there can be no building without the truth we heard. And there can be no building without the pillar of faith. And as we heard, if there is no pillar of truth, the building collapses. And even so, when there will be no pillar of faith, there will be no real building. It will be just the opposite. Everything will go into pieces. Everything will collapse and, and scatter. If there is no true faith, unbelief comes in. And that will scatter and collapse. And scatter into pieces. And that's why the Apostle Paul says, The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. As we heard. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the life, by the faith of the Son of God. So I want to move on with this specific truth that God's house will be built on the pillars and we need the pillar of truth and the pillar of faith for the house of God to be built. So we need truth, hold on to the truth in faith in these end times. Oh may God help us. So I want to move on further. We heard faith brings us into oneness with God's purpose, oneness with God's method, oneness with God's means, oneness with God's and God's time. We thank God for all that God has spoken to us. And I would like to share today, faith brings us into oneness with God's divine basis of His workings.
Suri Batavaka to give Pamaduga, Amato in a Pukalapi, Tazavana, Masia in a Masia Hijanin Baduni. And God's divine basis. Isorgi Oiba Adugumba Yumpam. The basis, the divine basis of his purpose is the basis of the, the principle of resurrection. Now this is very, very important for us. Very, very important for us. Oneness with God's divine basis, which is the basis of the principle of resurrection. You know, this principle of resurrection is very basic. That is the basis of fulfilling his purpose. And if there must be patience of faith, as we have seen, We need patience, long suffering. And it is very essential and indispensable that resurrection principle is God's basis. Now, coming back again to the example of Abraham, Abraham for a moment. Ki, we see in the life of Abraham that this principle was very active. Although he lived much before Christ's death and resurrection. As we saw, the laws of God they have been active even in the Old Testament this principle of resurrection was actively working in the life of Abraham Abraham was tested when he was tested with reference to his faith or in the matter of his faith we see that in his trials this basis of resurrection was involved it was based upon the power of resurrection both in his case and also in the case of his wife Sarah. For example, we will turn to the book of Romans. Chapter 4, Panduk Marigi, Romans Chapter 4, We read here verse 17 onwards, I'll read. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. 
who against hope believed in hope that he might became, become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be verse 19 very important and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb so we see here in these scriptures we have seen these scriptures in the past couple of weeks back in both the cases as we saw from the book of Genesis, Sarah laughed at it. And the Lord said, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? So we see the resurrection basis in the life of even Abraham and Sarah. Abraham at work. Amen. He counted himself to have been dead even so with Sarah the Lord had to say is there anything too hard for the Lord so resurrection faith was required for both Abraham and Sarah in their lives Paul's letter makes it very clear. Or he considered his body to be as good as dead now. And therefore, the basis. So Abraham had faith. He came into oneness with the basis of God's workings. Or he came into oneness with God's divine basis of his workings, which is the power of resurrection. Amen. It's very important, my brothers and sisters, if we have to come into the full purpose of God, this principle of God's divine working, the basis, the divine basis of his working is the power of resurrection. So Abraham believed. Sarah also had a belief. So here, Abraham had to believe in the power of resurrection to work in him to bring forth Isaac. Now we see that even afterwards when God had blessed him with Isaac, there cometh another trial to offer his only promised son on the altar. So offering Isaac on the altar was again another place where the, the basis of God's working was brought in which is resurrection. He believed God. We were told or we are told that he obeyed God. And he believed that God would raise him up from the dead. So we see how Abraham was brought into oneness with God's divine basis of his workings. Hallelujah. It was a resurrection faith. 
Sivadagi Hingat Pagi Thaza Baduni. Providing God with what was necessary for the fulfillment of his purpose. And I want to say the church of Jesus Christ in, the, in these last days must come into the resurrection faith which will provide God the ground to fulfill what he has promised. Hallelujah. The church of Jesus Christ must come into that place. Like Abraham was brought into that place. The resurrection faith. And don't we know the Lord made it very clear to us even in the New Testament. Deny yourself. Take up the cross. That is resurrection principle. That's resurrection principle. That is the basis of God's workings. Hallelujah. Where their death works, life flows. Oh, we read that again and again in the letter of Paul. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we know this truth. The Lord has spoken in the gospel. We read this principle again reflected in the letters of Paul and other ep uh, epistles of the apostles. So we see this common ground. And yet we see that we are very slow when it comes to appropriating this ground in our lives. It's a ground that we all are familiar with. But we are very slow when it comes to appropriating this this basis of God's working. Oh, may God help us. We are slow in appropriating. But may the Holy Spirit help us this morning. May the Holy Spirit help us to know the truth. And reveal to us this truth. The divine basis of his working is the principle of resurrection. Now we know the ministry of the Holy Spirit as Jesus said. He will lead us into the truth. The Holy Spirit came precisely to make good in us and in the church all that Christ has accomplished through his death and resurrection in us and in his church. To accomplish, to make good all that he did. That we may come into what he died for. Amen. And that is what we read in the word of God. So the Lord said, after I have gone, the Holy Spirit will come. And that is why the Holy Spirit was given to us. 
to guide us into all truth. Achumba puna makta ikoi bu ching bina na bagida makta. And he will teach us. Adu ga ikoi na bu mahang na takpi tambi gani thawai seng mana. He will reveal to us. Ikoi na mahang na pongdok pi gani. The Holy Spirit will take the things of Christ and show them to us. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Today we have a Christendom, a Pentecostal charismatic realm, where the Holy Spirit is only seen in the realm of gifts. And they are totally lost today. Limiting the Holy Spirit merely to gifts. But the Holy Spirit was sent. For one great ministry with one great ministry, and that is to reveal things which are of Christ. Show those things unto us, reveal those things to us, and make those things real in us. All that was true of Christ is to become true of His church. Hallelujah. All that was true of Christ is to become true of Christ, the church, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, therefore, has to bring in the truth to us. That's the pillar of the house. He will lead you into all the truth. And the Holy Spirit, as He brings in the truth into us, He also implants faith in us. Hallelujah. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the truth, the word. So when the Holy Spirit brings in truth into us, Amen, He implants faith in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He implants faith in us. He nurtures faith in us. The question is that, am I available to Him? All oh, saints of God, in these end times, the church has to hold on to the truth in faith. The truth of God's revealed will. The truth of God's eternal purpose. Yes. The Holy Spirit has a great role in our lives in these end times. And unfortunately, the enemy has deceived the people. Blinded them. With just a little bit of experience of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And unwilling to move on into maturity in their lives. Remain in their childhood. Never wanting to move on to their adulthood. Remember, the Holy Spirit is... Not only to lead us into the truth, but he is here to, to implant faith in us. To nurture our faith. To strengthen the faith. And to step by step bring in the faith of the Son of God in us. As Paul said, 
Pakol sa pa pol na hay kibagum na. It's no longer I. Hazik ti ay oidra, har nagi ay do oidra. But Christ. Ato bu Kristo oidra. And that life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The Holy Spirit will implant that faith, nurture that faith, strengthen that faith, and bring us into that faith of the Son of God. And make it alive in my daily life. This is a tremendous ministry of the Holy Spirit. And cause that faith of the Son of God in me increase in my situations. Or may we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to His people today. So I would like to say here one thing. It is the faith of the Son of God. It is the faith of the Son of God. It is the faith of the Son of God. Holy Spirit wants to bring that faith into my life. The basis of God's working is the resurrection. Oh, may God help us. Therefore, be open to the Holy Spirit of God in these end times. So it is not a matter of my faith. So it is not my faith that will get me through. It is not your faith that will get you through. It is not your faith that will get My faith as it is, is weak. And I know how Strong is your faith. But I want to say that we will be brought into that realm of his faith. Amen. Now that may sound very difficult to the natural man, but remember that's where Abraham was. Abraham was to rely on the ability of God than his own, that is faith. Abraham na mahaki thazab, masaki thazab, badu dagi hain na ishogi 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 thazab, the faith of the son is the resurrection faith. Amen. Thazab, badu hingat pangam, badu thazab, badu dagi hain na ishogi thazab, badu dagi hain na ishogi thazab, And I know that it is not a a technical thing that we try to, you know, technical thing. From today, I'm going to just flip. It's like that. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. It is not a technical thing that we can switch over to. It's, it's a place where we are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And It's a place where I am sensitive to the Holy Spirit in my own life. Each day as I live. Lord, it's not my faith, but the faith of the Son. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next I'm going to trust in Him and in what He can do. And in what I can. It's a focusing on that principle of resurrection. Abraham was brought into that place. He identified. He came to that place where he realized that death is not the end. But that's where life begins.
So, my brothers and sisters, we are slow to appropriate, but may God help us. Amen. May God help us to appropriate. May we hear the voice of the Spirit today. Faith is the gift of God. Faith is the work of God. Don't forget that. Faith is the gift of God. Faith is the work of God in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Holy Spirit implants faith. Then he nurtures faith. He strengthens that faith. To bring us into the faith of the Son. Of God. To live by that faith. So remember, faith is the gift of God. Faith is also the work of God. He implants faith, he nurtures faith. It's the work of God. It increases as God works in us through circumstances and challenges in our daily life. How we are tested on everything in our day-to-day -day life. The Lord allows things to go. We are on for a long time sometimes. Sometimes we wonder, how long, Lord? How long is this matter going to be like this? How much more time will it take, Lord, for you to bring me out of this situation? The Lord allows. The Lord allows. Both in our lives as individuals and also corporately as body of believers. He allows those things. And sometimes some things would look as though it's just death for us. It is bringing us to places of death in us. Places of an end in itself. But that's where the principle, the basis of his working, the principle of resurrection will come. To work into our lives. Yes. When that I may know the power of His resurrection. Aina Mahaki that was the cry of the apostle. But there is a suffering to death there is also a resurrection. How much Paul emphasized this, whether it's to Corinthians, whether it's to Ephesians, we see this reflected in his letters. Death brings us a victory to places of resurrection. And we know that God brings us from one situation to another situation. As we see in the life of, the, uh, life of Abraham, 
The principle of resurrection was at work. Aduga siraga sibada gi hingatpa gi niti. Even to bring forth Isaac and thereafter to offer him on the altar. Even so in our lives. We may come up again and again. And taste of this principle and basis of divine working, which the principle of resurrection. So we need to settle this in our lives, brothers and sisters. When God brings us to a place of death, brings us into those trials in our lives, we need to know that the power of His resurrection will be at work. And I have shared this several times in the past. When you experience the resurrection work in one area of your life, it is so In small ways, I have experienced that. When God takes us, you through takes you through death in one area. You are sure to experience the power of His resurrection in that area. It's precious. And the reality is that. In that area, the enemy has no power. In the resurrected area, the enemy has no power. I've shared this before. The enemy has no power in that resurrected area. Because he's gone through death. They loved not their lives. Makoi masagi punsi nungsi kita bani pak nungsi zaki kita bani asir apa pahu pada nungsi zaki deh. Mana mana tu najis mana kari tau kamu lu kani. Mah ki si mah ki kulai si mana way kulai tu si rabani is powerless. Amen. Aduh kumbai koi na si raga hingat pagi. And this very real. Tamda yek na pagi panggal lagi. In our lives. And I want to encourage you. Aduh naik na thukat chenengi. When God's death works in us in certain areas and brings you into resurrection, that is very precious in the sight of God. Oh, may God help us. But, so God finds areas where that we must be brought into resurrection. So every new assault that would come upon us in the form of death. Remember that will also bring us into a new experience of resurrection. Yes. So the Lord would allow us to go through situation circumstances. We will never be able to come into a place and say, Lord, it's all over. But God will find areas in our lives where he will bring us into the principle of death and resurrection. Now we know that many a time questions arise in our lives. We have questions Mainly when it comes to the will of God, the purpose of God.
We have many time questions about what we have prayed to the Lord. I koi na ishor da hai se kharba prathna tau kharba. We are confessed to the Lord. I koi na wahang tau. I koi na hai tuok se kharba do. Adu so I koi na wahang amuk tau. We have agreed and declared. I koi na yazarega lau thok kharba do. Adu deso mu wahang tau. How often we have been brought to trials in those areas. Hari baza gasing adu da koi bu kaya da tatta na toi na changyeng tau ribano. It's a reality that we face in our lives. I koi na mayok na ribose koi punsi da. No one can ever say I will never. Kanamat na hai bang amloi. Doubt again. Ai di amuk hana ching nazar roi ka hai bang am wanate hai roi hai bang amloi. But not unbelief. Adu bud thaja dabugi oi budu di na tabo. Doubt ti lakani ching na budi lakani adu bud thaja dabugi oi budu di lau tau roi dabani. As we have heard before. Unbelief questions the character of God. Thus, the one who is holy, Mahabhi Pangal, who is holy, you do not know how it will happen. Singna ba hai, but siddhi karam na thoka ni hai na. Mary had a doubt. How will it happen? Singna da budu ni. Me maya ma mana singna ki karam na thoka ni karam na orakar. The Lord said, by the Holy Spirit, this will happen. Thawai sing magi ma paanam. So I want to say this. Mary ki punchi da chhai bi ki bani Mary na singna ba mat. We have doubts. Aduna ai na hai jan engi ai koi da singna ba. We have questions. Ai koi da wa hang dilai gani. Abraham had questions. Abraham so hang to ki. Sarah had questions. Sarah so hang to ki na. But one thing I would like to say here is, well, we come to those points and times where we have doubts, we have questions. On those very things we confessed. But that's where again we must. Come to faith. Ado bo ay koy na mapapatay ng Lord. Thaja bagi oy budo dada mung lahat. I am going to live by the faith of the Son of God. Prabhu ay nasani pagi thaja bagi mapapatay. It's not my faith. Ay git thaja bana na tresi. It is the faith of the Son. Asi di machani pagi thaja bagi mapapana ni. He who did all things. Puna mapu pangtok piba mahakna. He who did overcome even the last enemy. Aroi ba yekna ba phao ba ngam ki ba mahakna. He who is my intercessor and high priest. Aigi wanom biba aigi thoi ba purhilen oi biri ba mahakna. You know, so I can say when I look back into my own life, and I'm sure it is true of all of us. Though we had questions, struggles, the reality is that we have made some progress in the Lord. God has been working in our lives. The Lord is securing a, a foothold in our lives progressively. Prabhu na kumang chaksan na ay koy da adu kumbo kong pam jalan bibagi oy bado pina biri bani. He is securing a foothold in us. Ay koy da mahag na kong pam jalan biri bani. He is working in us through the trials. Sangyengi mapan na ikoy da thabuk shubiri bani ma. Of our faith. Ako githaja bagi sangyeng ado. Though sometimes our response to those trials are slow. Oi sangyeng ado da ikoy gipaw kuma sa tapla basu. God is bringing that work into us, as I said. The Holy Spirit is bringing and nurturing that faith in situations. When we open up ourselves, We stretch ourselves as we heard. Hallelujah. God is at work. God is at work. Faith is the gift of God. Faith is the work of God. It increases. 
as God works in us through circumstances and challenges, situations. God is bringing us to that place that we trust Him of the resurrection power to work in us. That God will bring us to that place. Face those situations which seem to be death for us. With an assurance and confidence. This is not the end. But this is the beginning. Hallelujah. So that's where I want to stop today. There's much more to share, but I see the time is up. And I will stop here. So I would like to say this. God will bring us to places where we think this seems to be a situation of death. But when we face that, there's an assurance and a confidence that this is not the end. But this is the resurrection. This is the new beginning. Oh, may God help us. The church of Jesus Christ shall move on in these end times to her destiny. She will hold on to the truth in faith. Amen. Amen. We need truth. Hold on to the truth in faith. We need these pillars without which the house of God will collapse. Our lives will collapse. You know, so may God help us. Faith brings us into oneness with divine basis of His workings, which is the principle of resurrection. And there's much more, you know, and I'm sure God will help us to see, you know, about this a little more, maybe the coming Sunday. So may God help us. Faith is the gift of God. Faith is the work of God. Holy Spirit implants this faith in us. So may God help us. Let's not waste these days in any way. But let us be awakened to righteousness in this hour. Knowing that our salvation is near. Let's not get back into slumber again. But let's be serious. Men and women who will progress on in faith. God is securing a growing foothold, a progressive foothold in His church, in His people, individually. And God. May God help us. Let's look unto the Lord in prayer. Shall we all stand up in this Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be God. Blessed be the Lord. Let's bring our lives 
in the light of the word unto God. The Lord who can see us through and through. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now we are able to identify Many a time fear grips us in our challenges and situations. We have seen very clearly God's divine basis of his workings has been the principle of resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes of understanding. Thank you, Jesus. The church of Jesus Christ will hold on to the truth in faith in these end times. Thank you, Lord. So help us, let that be our prayer. God will accomplish a great work in his church. Holy Spirit is given to implant faith. Nurture faith in us. Increase that faith in us. That we would come into that place. That, they, that we will live by the faith of the Son of God. Live by the faith of the Son of God. It's not a technical thing that we can get into. But it's something that we will come into as we stretch ourselves to the Holy Spirit. God imparts faith. Hallelujah. It's a gift of God. But it's also work of God. Faith is the work of God. Oh, may God help us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your word that you have given unto us today, Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that comes out of your mouth, O oh God. Father, we pray as we prayed at the beginning. Let this word be a broken word unto us, O oh God. Broken word that we are able to appropriate it, O oh God. Though it's a slow work, There is a work. Your Holy Spirit is able to do, Lord. And we want to give ourselves, Lord, that you would quicken this work in us. We want to stretch ourselves to thy Holy Spirit and his ministry. To implant this faith, to nurture this faith, to strengthen this faith that we come into the faith of the Son of God. Hallelujah. We'll experience the resurrection work of thine, O God. When we are brought into trials and testings in our lives, 
when we go through those times of real death in certain areas lord help us to know there's a joy waiting there of a resurrection of god hallelujah a resurrection how often we want resurrection without death in our lives lord deliver us from this how often god lord your children we want to ride on the power of resurrection not allowing death to work in us thy servant said i may know the power of his sufferings the fellowship of his sufferings and the power of his resurrection lord help us therefore help us therefore lord that the death that you will bring us into in our lives in the natural in the soul man lord it's not the end there is resurrection there there's a putting on of the spiritual man there there's a conformity that we will be brought into that realm lord father help us therefore you are securing a progressive a growing foothold in the life of god's your children of god in these days father help us that these days would not pass by without that faith rising us within us lord rising up within us to come into that oneness with your divine basis of working the divine basis of a working out your eternal purpose Amen. even the principle of resurrection oh god lord though we know about it we didn't see the way that you are now revealed unto us help us lord this is the basis of your purpose being worked out help us father we bring our lives to the holy spirit lead us into that realm that we would be able to appropriate help us we want to open up ourselves to your ministry in our lives give you the glory give you the praise again father help us yes the whole creation is groaning oh god man in himself is a lie because he is not what you intended or made him to be but we thank you lord there is going to be a change yes sir god we thank you we bless you for all that you have ministered to us give you the glory and praise help us to appropriate experience this word this coming week in our lives in whatever measure help us lord give you all the glory give you all the praise of god Yes father be glorified in our lives through our lives Lord is our humble prayer worship and bow before you in Jesus most precious and matchless name we pray amen